Our first stop on the tour is the Women's Situation Room. These are some of the most powerful women in Sierra Leone, and in some cases, Africa. Their purpose is to reduce the potential for violence against women during the election process. Okay. That means you are going to be on at every polling station you're counting. Just, just one. Just one. Oh, just one. Okay, fair enough. Because it's a pilot. Yeah, okay. It's a pilot, yeah. Okay, that's it. We have an app, but I may not show it to you. We just have a quick conversation. Um, we'll send you an article I wrote on Medium. But the idea is that uh, with democracy, it's based on trust. If you don't have trust, there's no democracy. And if your vote doesn't count and your people aren't voting, I'm American. We suffer this uh, <laughs> regularly, um, and if you're not, people are not voting. They don't trust the government. Democracy suffers. It undermines democracy. So, with this technology having one person, one vote, um, and the fact they can't be tampered with, we're hoping that in Sierra Leone, in Guinea, in Nigeria, um, in in Africa in general, that we can create more trust in democracy and hopefully change. Hello, hi, Leslie here um, from Team Revolutum. Um, I'm a British Sierra Leonean, first time voting in Sierra Leone. Um, we are at Milton Magai College. Um, I will take you around and talk to you about the process and how the voting takes place. When you come through, you have a gentleman here that is guarding and ensuring that they come in in single numbers. They are then verified on this table over here you've got the gentleman over there verified. And over there on my right you have different party officials that are ensuring that the people that are verified are on the list and they're ticking them off so then that shows us one person one vote the individual then goes over to the lady over there where they're shown um, Next. ballot papers for president and parliamentarians. The way the government currently is using ID cards is we have um, a passport, the birth certificate, and existing ID. So there is a bit of um, credentials that are required to create that. In the case of DID, when we use our ID identity on the blockchain, we will still maintain this high level of rigor and identification. But once they're identified by a government official, we will take that from the government office, create a QR code or a hat and they will then have a digital ID. As you can see, it's a poor country, there's not a lot of infrastructure. So that digital ID may still be um, contained
trained on a, a QR code that's physically held and so on, but if they have a smartphone or a tablet or even a feature phone, we could use um, SMS technology um, uh, or our app to, to allow them to uh, have it. So we want to take the mimic the existing physical process but put secure blockchain technology in it. What's essential is that there's one person and one vote. And using the blockchain that will be um, ingested will become part of this immutable ledger as we know. And the output is, the important thing is that we increase trust in the process, we um, increase trust in democracy, and the people will be more likely to vote because then the vote is count. While at the polling station, we had the opportunity to interview the station manager, who is legally accountable for all operations at this particular station. Can you tell us why the vote's important for Sierra, Sierra Leone and, and why? The voting process in Sierra Leone is very much important because it is a particular time Sierra Leoneans come on board to vote and elect their president, councillors, mayors, chairpersons in their own constituencies and their ward so that they can rule and make a mark in their country. How, so far, has the process been peaceful and, and smooth and everything going good? It has been very peaceful, no irregularities, no violence, you know, it's been very peaceful. That's good. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, just quickly before I let you go, if one person had one vote and that vote was not tampered with and you could vote safely from home using a mobile app, would that change elections for Sierra Leone? Very well, very well, because vast technology is on the way now. So if at least somebody stays home and vote, we are in nobody tampers with that vote compared to wherein you come to the police station with crowd, you know, facing all every challenges there. I think if that's why it's on board it's really if it is happening in European countries or Western world, why can't we enjoy the same facilities really? We also traveled to nearby Godrich to speak with popular station Air Radio's Mukhtar. 65% of Sierra Leone's population live in hard to reach rural areas, so they depend largely on radio as the most accessible media source. If there is a new idea in upcoming election for me to be sitting at home and vote, it is a welcome idea. Yeah. It will help our older people, it will help the the aged, it will help those in hospital who are sick, they will just click and vote. It will help those of our brothers in diaspora who want to participate in our election to be able to be registered through technology and vote through technology. It will be a welcoming idea for majority of Sahelians because people have been hanging for it. People want to participate in the election but because there is no much, there is not much technology around. Governments are to restrict, for example, the people in the diaspora not to vote because they are not around. But with technology, if technology is implemented yeah. in an upcoming election, I'm sure it will make election very easy. Yeah, that's the idea. And also the idea that it's, um, it eliminates any chance for fraud or anything like this by using that technology, of the blockchain technology. Yeah. Our app has been revitalized around voter identity. It uses ECIES, or Elliptical Curve Integrated Encryption Scheme, one of the most powerful forms of encryption available. We decided to engage with the tech sector of Sierra Leone. They had low awareness of blockchain, but when they understood the concept of a tamper-proof election and how one person, one vote could affect their country, they were very interested. So there's many reasons why you can use the blockchain. We focus on ID. We're talking to the guys at Revolutum about possibly money transfers up to villages or secure transactions, um, um, talking to people from one place to another in remote areas. But in this case, well, the pilot that we ran with the team was about it was all around the election and make sure the election results were untampered. So that's one of the things we do. We, we, we transfer IDs over the blockchain securely. We're using the highest level of um, encryption called ECS1, which is an uh, elliptical curve encryption. Um, so it's the highest degree of encryption that we can use. We're interviewing students. We want to talk to them about how they felt about Sierra Leone, the election, and importantly, how the concept of one person, one vote, and a tamper-proof election using blockchain could affect their lives.
I think that the blockchain is well. If it's well secure, it's okay because when you turn the blockchain, there is no password in it, and it's used only your ID. It's okay, and we know that it's authentic because people are not uh, hacking into the system. The blockchain is okay. So you came to hear us speak, and you said for this organization, you want to learn more about the blockchain and possible uses for for this. Did you find anything out how you could see how you, this technology could help your your organization? Yes, um, greatly. Um, I actually benefited from education and um, fellowship opportunities that I has to use the, the online platform to be able to access that. And that took me to the United States and I'm back. And we are also helping other young people across the country to see how they can also access the, the online platform for the lot of opportunities that are there that will facilitate their, their professional and career growth. So basically, um, that's why I'm interested in all of these, because um, uh, we we saw the opportunity that is there, so where people can 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 use the internet platform and um, without the fear that they could be hacked, their the ID could be saved, and those kinds of things. I'm sure I'm going to be one of the first five or ten people who will be out of this, who are out in the streets to protest to the to the government that there should be blockchain. Okay, now blockchain. Um, few days I've been hearing about blockchain. And it has been um, so sweet in my ears. And for the few people that I've explained to, um, it has been so wonderful, the, re the reply they are giving to me. I believe um, there will be trust because I know it's one person, one vote. One of my favorite people that we interviewed on election day was Benedict. Benedict, William, Benedict. Matthew, Wanda. Nice to meet you. And he has just voted. And I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. So. Why was it important for you to come out today and vote? I flew all the way from Los Angeles area in the US to come here to make sure that we got the right people elected in the right places. Cool. And what would you like to see for the future of Sierra Leone in terms of democracy and voting? I want to see a Sierra Leone that is prosperous, a Sierra Leone where everyone can uh, at, attain his potential. I want, to con I want to see a country wherein we do not always come at the bottom of the index. We do not, we have so much resources in this country that we do not deserve to be called one of the poorest nations of, on earth. So what I want to see is a president that is dynamic, that is resourceful, that has the people in mind. I want a cabinet full of ministers who put the country first. It's really nice to meet you, and thank you for letting us interview you today. Thank you, it's a pleasure, and thank you for coming to help our country. God bless you. Thank you.